Sonia, thank you for agreeing to take part in this interview. Could you please start by telling me about your background and your current role? Of course, I would be very happy to do so. Um, I'm originally from Ireland, and I have worked in the pharma industry pretty much my whole career. First of all, in Ireland, and subsequently in the United States for about eight years. And I've been living now in Switzerland for the last five years. Um, I've always worked in HR, and I've been very fortunate. I've been offered wonderful opportunities to work pretty much across most areas of the business. Uh, with respect to Shire, I've worked with Shire for almost two years. Shire is a leading biopharmaceutical company, which has three businesses, uh, specialty pharmaceuticals, regenerative medicine, and human genetic therapies, the latter of which is, is essentially the rare disease business. And this is the business I work within. I am the HR lead for the rare disease business. And I'm based just outside of Geneva in our new European hub. And how do you think that pharma companies can retain key players? Great question. Um, the pharma industry, for me, is a wonderful industry to work in. It's, it's the opportunity to find therapies, perhaps even cures for some of the most devastating of, of diseases. And sometimes with all the bad press that the industry receives, we forget about this. Coming to work every day knowing you can make a difference to the lives of patients is clearly something we should all be reminding ourselves of regularly. Um, it's a key motivator and, and to me a key retention tool also. Aside from this, however, given the industry we're in, I do believe it is critical that we are creating environments where our talent can make a difference. At the end of the day, the scientists need the space and the freedom to do what they do best, which is innovative science and an environment that allows the talent to grow every day and where everybody, no matter what their position, feels that they're valued and that they're recognized for the contributions that they're making. And what are the challenges of successful talent management? The challenges I've experienced over my career have typically boiled down, quite frankly, to one thing, and, and that's for me, leadership ownership. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by this is where leaders in the past particularly didn't always realize that actively managing their talent was as important as managing the company finances, the products, the processes, and so forth. And often the um, responsibility for talent management was delegated to others, often to HR. Um, and, I, and I think when this happens and a leader, um, if you will, behaves in this way, it sends a message throughout the organization because everybody, of course, watches what the leader does, where the leader spends their time. And then other more junior leaders take their cue from this behavior. And then as a result, talent management becomes somewhat disjointed, often inconsistent in how it's managed but also not seen as a top priority for the business. And how do you think these challenges can be overcome? Of course, um, having the right leader in place uh, cannot be underestimated. I think with the right leader who models the behavior of just a great people leader, this can become infectious and impacts the overall company culture and therefore the employee engagement. Other leaders will then take their cue, and before too long, you find that more time, priority, and resources will be directed towards active talent management. And I think if you have that right leadership in place and you couple it with a strong talent management or leadership and development function, whatever uh, you call it within, within your company, um, the two together will allow you then to create the kind of processes that will optimize uh, your talent management. And aside from leadership, what do you think is key to successful talent management process? Um, for me, I believe it starts with linking talent management back to the business strategy. So first off, you really need to know what it is that you're trying to achieve as a, as a company. And then from there, it's possible to identify the skills, the competencies that the company will need in, in order to succeed. 
Um, once you have that, and of course the, the leadership, as I've mentioned, in place, and, and a leader who truly acts as the, the chief talent officer, if you will, um, then, it's, then it really is about hiring the best and most diverse talent you can find with these skills and competencies. And when you hire the best talent, that talent will attract other top talent. And, and that's what makes it um, so infectious and so positive. Then it's about investing your dollars, your development dollars, wisely. And by this I mean invest in ensuring that the whole organization is growing and is engaged. Because if you spend exclusively on just the top talent, there'll be a huge divide, and then the top talent will not have a good or engaged team around them to, to flourish. Um, now, don't get me wrong. When I say that, I do think it's also crucial that we know our top talent, that we know their aspirations, their motivations, and that we have the development plans in place. And most importantly, that we're following through on those development plans. So often these individual development plans that we hear so much about, they gather dust. They're pieces of paper that are done as part of a year-end process. But in this day and age, given how crucial talent is to success of business, it's really unacceptable if individual development plans are not living, breathing documents. Um, and then, as I mentioned uh, before, I think having an excellent learning and development team or talent management team will be instrumental to in ensuring that all of the talent management processes are integrated, well designed, and that both the leaders and indeed the HR business partners are well trained and focused um, with respect to, to the talent management processes. And how can the success of the Global Talent Management Program be measured? This is always a challenging question to answer. Um, and I have typically used a combination of what I call leading and lagging measures mm -hmm. um, as perhaps the most practical approach. Uh, measuring employee engagement for me is an important leading measure. So I always recommend that every organization should have a strong and constant fing finger on the pulse of its organizational health um, this gives you a good sense in terms of if what you're doing is actually um, having an impact on the, the, the overall organization in a positive way, of course. Following through on the actions of talent management processes uh, is critical and, and certainly can be measured. So are you regularly measuring that what you said you'd, you would do, you're actually doing, and is this showing through in terms of your promotions, in terms of opportunities for uh, new assignments for your top talent? Um, and are, are you really able to see a significant change in the depth of your bench strengths? So what I mean by that is in terms of are you growing the number of top talents that you have ready now, ready in a year, ready in three years for that next key position? So being dogged about monitoring um, this activity or, or these results, um, I believe, is, is important. And of course, from a lagging perspective, uh, one always has to be kind of watching attrition, and especially the attrition of the top talent. Uh, if, if you are seeing some spike in attrition of top talent, why is that? Is there a trend? Is it in a particular part of the world? Are, is there a particular reason behind it? So, so I think it is a combination of looking at those kind of leading uh, measures and also the lagging measures. And what measures is Shire currently undertaking to ensure success in future talent management? Mm -hmm. Shire places a really strong focus on talent management from, I would say, the boardroom right the way through to each functional area. It's, it's actually one of the reasons I joined Shire and, and one of the reasons I, I stay with them. Um, I would say right now the we have four areas that we're focused on. If I just take 2012, uh, the first is we have just completed 
um, our leadership capabilities model. So this is actually identifying what we believe are the differentiating competencies that leaders at Shire will need to have in order to be able to successfully execute on our business strategy. And we just completed those at the end of 2011. So for 2012, we're really focused now on actually assessing our leaders against these competencies from a development perspective. So following the assessment, creating then very robust and relevant development plans to ensure that we're continuing to to help our leaders to grow in, in these particular competencies, as well as starting to build the competencies into our hiring at the, the leadership level. That will be the first thing. The second area is we are focused very heavily on developing our people managers, uh, developing great people managers and holding them accountable for the role that they have uh, the responsibility they have, in fact, for nurturing and engaging talent um, is something that uh, just in the last year we've really been kind of upping our game in terms of that focus. Um, and so that will continue during this year. The third area is we're actually piloting a strategic workforce planning initiative. Um, and this is really an initiative designed to educate and focus our managers and leaders on thinking about workforce planning from a much longer term, a much more strategic perspective. Um, and it's a, it's a big undertaking to do this across a, a full enterprise. So we've decided to start by piloting it within uh, the business unit I'm in, in, in HGT. Um, so that uh, we can help our leaders to be thinking more on a strategic basis with respect to, to workforce planning. And then finally, we are in the process of revising our employment value proposition within HGT, within the rare disease business, to ensure that it truly does reflect who we are, i.e. the leader in rare diseases, and ensure that the right messages are being um, communicated to both our existing employees but also to prospective employees and ensure that it is compelling and, and, and brings the top talent into our business. So I would say they are the four things, Rebecca, we're focused on for this year. Gronje, thank you very much for your time today and for sharing your insights. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Rebecca.